Hey everybody, today I'm going to be reviewing the uh, Helicute, or Helicute, a Hero Space Explorer. This is actually one of the coolest toy quadcopters that I've been able to review. I just really like this. It's really unique and really a fun flyer. It comes in this, there's a lot of different versions, an H and an HC and an HW. So you have a basic altitude hold, an altitude hold with camera, an altitude hold with Wi-Fi. And there's a VGA and a 720p. This is a v, uh, the 720p version with uh, altitude hold and Wi-Fi FPV. Now it transmits in uh, 720p Wi-Fi uh, back to the app that I'll show you in a minute on my phone. And uh, it actually records pretty good video quality for that. Uh, that's becoming more and more common to see these 720p uh, Wi-Fi FPV. And it actually does a pretty good job. Now, oddly enough, on the back here, it has a micro SD slot, but that is not active on this one. It would just make a, a, a video folder on the SD card, but it doesn't actually record any video. So that's kind of odd. Um, that's one of the very few negatives I could say, though I really have a hard time being too critical since this particular version is not advertised to record the SD card. But since it's included on the board, I don't know why they didn't go ahead and just make it active because you'll get a better video quality at any time you can record locally to the SD card. It has a very unique design. The rear props here are uh, higher than the front props. I've never seen that before, but it flies really, really nice. I mean, super stable and uh, uh, very agile, I think, you know, for its design. And it looks really cool too. It has these really nice LEDs. It's got red in the front and it's got green in the back. And of course, that's the way it's labeled here. I just wanted to make sure that they didn't have it backwards from the uh, plastic. Um, it's got, um, you know, it's got one yaw rate though. It doesn't increase with the rates, but it's a pretty decent yaw, so I don't have a problem with that. It's got a uh, three rates, you know, low, medium, high, or uh, beginners, intermediate, expert, and uh, it flies pretty nice. It got a nice amount of pitch to it, and the highest rate. And you really need that when you're flying this in the wind to fight the wind, because it doesn't do particularly well in the wind. But overall, it's unique. It's got these three landing gear here. So as you set it down, hopefully it'll show a little better on the other camera here. It just uses those three landing gear, and it does a very nice auto landings. It shuts off immediately. So I'm very pleased with the way that this thing lands. Just gonna glance my notes over here some more. Um, it comes with a 1,000 uh, milliamp our a 1S LiPo. And that's a pretty big battery for a toy grade quadcopter. Um, you know, this thing is not too, not very heavy, so you know, it, it just flies very long. You look at 10 to 12 minutes flight time with this big battery. And it just uses the JST plug, so you don't need to use a stock charger. If you have a hobby grade, this JST plug is so common, you can just straight up charge of that at uh, one amp and charge this thing up in you know half an hour or something where the provided charger here is a uh, USB wall charger with the JST plug and this is gonna this takes you you know several hours to charge up with this because it charges at a much lower amp than a hobby grade charger. It also comes with some spare props just a full set of you know spare props and a Phillips screwdriver for repairs. And I think that's also, yeah, for taking the screw out to put the batteries in the back of the controller. It also comes with four, I still have them taped in, because I'm not a fan of using them, but it's got four prop guards you can see here in the box. They're still taped in. Like I said, unless you're flying this indoors or around a lot of trees or something, I don't recommend them. Or if you're a beginner, so I don't use the prop guards. Um, let's go over the controller now. The controller, is uh, really fits really nicely in the hands. Uh, very comfortable. It's not, you know, real, you know, it's not really awesome looking, I guess you could say. It doesn't have a bunch of you know, labels or anything or fancy buttons, but it works really well. And it's got a couple LED li lights here on the front. Um, you just turn it on the bottom here. You can see it lights up, the blue and the red. And you've got on your buttons here, let me just look at my sheet to make sure I don't forget the controls, but uh, you've got your speed selects for your rates here by pressing in the left stick. And that goes between your three rates, one, two, and three beeps. You've got a trim button for the yaw. This one here, which would be your uh, throttle trim normally, this is for your headless mode up and for down, 
This is for a one key return. On the right here, these are fully functional. This is your pitch and your roll trim. Your top left button here, this is for doing um, unlocking your props and for uh, doing a uh, auto landing. Now, oddly enough, it does not do an auto takeoff. So you unlock the props, you still have to manually take off. Um, like I said, you just press in on it and it will come on down and land and it does really nice landings. I'm real impressed with that. You can also unlock the props by both sticks out and I think also both sticks in and just take off. So you don't have to use that button. The top right, this is for taking video if you had the SD card version. So a short press does a picture and a long press would do the video if you had it. Oddly enough, if you do this while it's flying and you have an SD card put in, it will start to flash like it's recording. So you think, oh wow, it's gonna work, but no. It just uh, makes a video folder and that's all it does for this particular version. Now, if you have the C version, then it's going to work that way and you're going to be able to uh, uh, take video. It has a really nice built-in phone, uh, phone uh, holder here for your FPV. Okay, see, I, my phone usually causes problems with this curved back and it goes right in here and fits really nice. It's a little bit top heavy, but not bad. But this is one of the best controllers I've ever used just because of how it's laid out and the fact that this uh, this phone fits into it so nicely without any issues at all. I think the, the calibrate the gyros on this, I believe it's down and to the right and to light squip flashing. I will try to confirm that again. I think I left it off my notes before I do the flight review just uh, to make sure that I did have that right for the calibration. So I want to just glance at my notes here real quick to make sure I didn't forget anything. Oh, it says um, it has 360 flips by pressing in on the right stick in the way you want to go. Now, it does start to beep, but it does not do flips. Now, I'm not a huge fan of 360 flips, so it doesn't really bother me. For some people, they might be a negative to them because it just does not flip. And I've confirmed that with two other people that have this model. So I know that it's not just mine, that it just does not do uh, 360 flips. Yeah, I think I think we covered everything there. So let me just go look at the app real fast, and then we'll move on to the flight review. The app you want to get is called the HelloCute 720p FPV. I don't know if this is going to show up over here on the other camera or not, but uh, you just press that and start it up. Of course, you want to make sure that you're connected to the Wi-Fi first. It'll come up as a HelloCute in your Wi-Fi list. If you go to settings here. You can set it to 720p preview. I would think that you would need to have that on to record the 720p video because it's just recording the stream, but I'm not for sure. That could just be, it could record the 720 and display it in 480. And there's a few other settings, but I have it on. It seems to work fine. It's not super laggy, um, which is nice. 720 with more data, you expect even more lag. You've got a uh, your picture in your video, your rates button, you know, flying with the gyro if you're just using the phone. It's got a flight path if you want to try that out. There's your on-screen displays on and off. And there's some additional settings here for flipping it over. Headless mode, calibrating the gyros, stuff like that. So just like all the other apps. But it works well. I'm pretty happy with this app. And like I said it holds in my phone really nicely. So overall, this works really well. And it flies really well even when connected to the... Uh, Wi-Fi FPV because at first I kind of thought it might be affecting its flight characteristics but outside I can tell no difference it flies just the same whether I'm connected to the Wi-Fi FPV or not so let's go ahead and we'll move along now to the uh, flight review okay let's go ahead now we'll take the uh, HeloCute Hero Space Explorer quadcopter up for a uh, flight review now and we got the camcorder on the ground so we'll try to get a nice shot of it taking off I think that's a pretty cool view I've got it bound up with the controller and with the uh, FPV. And uh, I said, I think the FPV works pretty decent on this, especially for 720p. So um, one thing I wanted to mention before I took off, as I said at the table, if I had the gyros uh, calibration wrong, I would mention that. It is actually down to the left is what it says in the instructions. You're not going to be able to see it there on the ground. Uh, the LEDs just here in the day, it's not bright enough. You know, the LEDs uh, I think are pretty cool, and especially in low light, they look really nice especially for a 1S LiPo. So let's go ahead now and we'll start recording video. And it's recording the FPV feed. We'll go ahead and we'll unlock the props. I'll use the, uh, you can see here I'll show you. You can unlock them like that. 
you can unlock them by going in and stop, or you can use this top left button. So let's go ahead and we'll use the top left button, and we'll go ahead and take off. It's taking it a moment just to kind of get its uh, <clears throat> gauge its altitude. Now that's the lowest rate. I'm going to go up to the highest rate. Now I see I can start moving forward. <clears throat> I was fighting a bit of a breeze there, and on the lowest rate, it did not have enough pitch. So I had to put it full pitch just to keep it the whole position. So I would not recommend the, uh, the lowest rate unless you are flying this in a large open indoor area. There's the yaw on the highest rate. I'll go back to the lowest. You can see the yaw is just the same. So there's no difference in the yaw, but it's it, it's not bad in my opinion. And like I said, now it gets a really nice flight time, <clears throat> you know, at least 10 minutes. I can see the LED is actually pretty good here on the, on the arms for it being, uh, you know, pretty. We're looking around 5:30, 6 o'clock time here in the summer, so it's still very bright out, <clears throat> and it's uh, the LEDs are pretty nice. But I wasn't able to see them on the ground doing the gyro. They just weren't quite bright enough to flash against the concrete and be able to see it. <clears throat> now the, uh, I will show you the 3D flips that it doesn't do it. You press down and hear it beeping and it does nothing. I'm just giving it pitch and roll and then it stops. So for some reason they have disabled that. It could be they originally included it as a feature and then they found out that it just did not do flips good enough and maybe it caused it to crash, and that it just wasn't something they needed to include, and they took it out and just didn't remove it. They may have already imprinted the instruction manuals. You see that a lot with these products. The instruction manuals are just not quite accurate. They've made changes, and they did not make notes of it. This is the first uh, quadcopter or anything RC I've had from this brand. I've never heard of them, but I'm super impressed. You look how stable that is. I have my hands off. I'm just letting the, uh, the breeze push it. And that's fighting into the wind at, at the highest rate. See, it's, it's not real quick into that breeze, but there's probably, you know, an 8 to 10 mile per hour breeze. So it's, it, it gets along, but it's not super fast into that wind. Just going to confirm, there we go, yeah, that I had it in the highest rate. Let's show you an auto landing here because it, like I said, it doesn't have auto takeoff, but it does have auto landing. And you just simply press the top left button in a long press and it will come down. And look at that. Really, I, I was able to control it to adjust it as it came to the ground, but uh, it comes down. I've never had it tip over those three landing gear, and it always shuts the motors off immediately, which I really like a lot. Let's go ahead and we'll just do a, a, a manual takeoff by unlocking it with both sticks out. But this is just a really nice flyer. Looks like we've got uh, about 3 minutes and 50 seconds of video since I started recording. So we've got a ton of flight time left on this guy. From what I saw of the initial video I recorded to the app, uh, the video was pretty good. There might have been a little jello wobble in it, but it wasn't bad. Now, I was flying in much windier conditions of this, so I was having a little trouble just holding position at all in the highest rate that day. But anything this small on brushed motors is going to have a hard time flying in any kind of wind. It just doesn't have the size and the powerful enough motors, even with extreme pitch. But this is a nice, nice quadcopter. It, it bounces a little bit as it's, you know, at times. I'm not, not really concerned about that. I think that's mostly the design and the wind. I don't think it's mu as much as it trying to find its altitude. Because it does have altitude hold, as I mentioned at the beginning of my review. And you can always tell that because it's still, it's, the left stick is self centering. But this is the altitude hold Wi Fi version. Um, if you don't need FPV, which I don't really need it on these toys, 
then I would go with the C version because you're going to be able to record that SD card and get a really nice video quality without any kind of drop frames that you might get over Wi-Fi. So we'll see how well this links up to the view. I didn't check the frame rate on this. It's probably 24 or 30. But we were recording at 60 frames per second, so sometimes that can cause sync issues. I'm going to go ahead and stop recording now to make sure we've got video saved. One other thing that I have noticed, and I can see it in my FPV feed and in my other flights, is you do see the front propellers in the video. So that's a bit of a negative in my opinion. Um, you'd like an unobstructed view. It's not, a, it's not terrible. As you can see here in the video, it's at the top. But uh, you can see the props. But that you know, lower prop, higher prop in design. But you know, the camera's just located here in the nose of the quadcopter. But it seems to help out with the jello. But it'd be nice if they had mounts a little different to uh, eliminate that. But really, my, my biggest issues really are just the, uh, the props in the camera, the, uh, oh, let's see, the props in the camera was, was one of them here I said. I'm having a bit of a brain lapse here. The lack of 3D flips, you know it says that it has those. And a micro SD card being in there but not active in this version. So that's a lot less one because it's not supposed to have SD. But if they're going to include it, why not just go ahead and make it active? Yeah, I think that's enough to show this guy off. Look at it, it's just really nice, really cool looking, very unique design. And I'm a, I'm a big fan of this. This is my favorite toy grade drone that I have right now. And one of the better ones I've had all together. With that big battery, you get a really nice long flight time. So I'm going to go ahead and do an auto landing here. And that was the closest we ever come to a flip over. I'll give Gust a win. That's the first time that I've had it actually even fall onto its side. But that's not going to hurt anything at all. Because it kills the props immediately, you don't have to worry about it chopping up your blade. You can see this thing looks, I mean, I've flown it several times and there's absolutely no damage to these props at all. So this is a really a cool drone. I do like this a lot. Now the camera, you know, as like I said, it's fixed. You cannot tilt it or anything. So, you know, it'd be nice if they had added that feature so you don't get those front propellers in the, uh, in the video. So, all right, well, I appreciate you for watching. And if you're not a subscriber, please do subscribe. And I've got a whole bunch more stuff to review, including the X-16 uh, GPS drone and uh, an RC car. And I've got, um, Furby Futon Racer coming up. Um, so I got a whole bunch of stuff that's coming. So stay tuned for more and have a good day. The power of the dark side, 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 side.